Salutations and welcome to Monomythic. I'm Kevin Garcia, professional comic book historian, and today we're talking about web comics, how to make them, why to make them. And with me today, I have a couple really, really great web comic creators. Uh, for example, the creator of the Menage a Trois universe with Pixie Tricks Comics, and also a creator of Eerie Cuties and others, uh, Giselle Legacy. Welcome. Hello. Nice and I also here. have, well, thank you very much. And I also have the creator of Assassin Roommate, uh, who's had a lot of success on the Webtoon app, but also made a lot of other graphic novels and stuff on, as well, Monica Gallagher. Monica, welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I want to make this talk about how web comics are made, why web comics are made. And I thought it'd be really, really good to have people that have had a lot of success in that area um, and, and discuss it. Uh, Giselle, I kind of want to start with you for a second. Could you tell us how you first got into web comics and, and how that took off for you? Uh, it was the late 90s, uh, like around 99. Uh, I've, I noticed that people started putting uh, comics uh, on the web, like uh, PVP and uh, Penny Arcade and stuff like that. There was also a Big Panda. So there was a lot of uh, web comics uh, starting back then. And uh, I always wanted to do comics as well. And uh, I knew I wasn't, uh, I mean, it was almost impossible to be like to get syndicated or anything like that. So I figured, okay, well, uh, I mean, this looks like to be the future. So I decided to do a web comic. So I started my uh, first web comic in, uh, I think it was March or April uh, 2000. So, but I had, you know, I had seen what was out there a little bit. And, um, and I was, but it was like a part-time thing for me. It wasn't something I was doing like full-time or anything. I was uh, working as a, I was a art director at this uh, graphic design place. And that, that took a lot of my time. So it was, it was hard to, to juggle both, both things for a little while until I, until the web comics became the, my, my main gig. So. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Monica, how about you? How did you get involved in, in web comics? How did this evolve for you? Yeah, that's too funny. I had a very similar kind of evolution too. Cause I, I also, I started with web comics um, in 2000, I think is when I first started like putting it on my website. Um, I used to have this comic called Gods and Undergrads that I did for a long time. Um, because I saw like, I think Scott McCloud was one of the first ones I saw. And then um, Jason Little who did B comics. I got into theirs before I saw like um, Danielle Corsetto, Girls with Slingshots and the like, uh, the PVP people and stuff. So yeah, it's really fascinating that it was kind of like, we all kind of like noticed it and like latched on at the same thing. Like it's such a great way, it's such a great equalizer that you don't have to like wait for a publisher or anything like that. You can just like start creating and putting it out there. Well, what makes web comics uh, that, that you mentioned it as an equalizer and Giselle, you talked about it being like the way of the future. Um, what what makes web comics as opposed to the the traditional printed often monthly comics we have in the U.S. Um, so so appealing, Giselle? Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, I just did it because I it was easy. Like I didn't have to. I could control everything. I didn't have to talk to anybody. I didn't have to anybody over my head. Uh, and instant feedback when you would you'd post something up there, uh, you'd get people. You know. I don't know. It just felt natural. It just felt like to me, it was like logical. Uh, so, and there's a certain freedom to it too. Like you can do whatever that, whatever you want. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no editor telling you to, uh, you know, you can't do this because it's going to go in this paper and it'll, it'll never fly. Uh, so for me, uh, and I was a musician before uh, too. So, you know, it was always something that I, and I would write my own stuff and it was always, I was a bit of a rebel and I think uh, this felt rebel. So I guess I liked it because of that. Monica, what do you think? Uh, I think because most everyone can access it and you can you have a direct link to the people reading it. That has always made it really, really um, just such a, a, a special connection between you and your readers that you don't get a lot of times with print comics because there's like such a delay and how long it took you to make it. And then by the time it gets out to people and then maybe you hear like 10 years later, oh, I really like that book. It's like, oh, cool. So yeah, I love the the instant feedback and community that it creates because it, it does create. And you also, and there's also, also this freedom that it hasn't gone to print yet. So I mean, mm -hmm. if there's something to fix, you can fix it. 
Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. They would, there's something so final about going to print. Uh, it's like, you know, you'll notice mistakes and it's already printed so on the web. You just fix it. It's not the end of the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it really helped me um, learn how to write and learn how to structure scenes and um, like cliffhangers and chapters and stuff, because I was just kind of playing around with, and I, I didn't think anyone was reading it because I don't think anyone was for a while. So I had the freedom to just like experiment, which I think is really nice about web comics. And I think the 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 deadlines, like the, the the little deadlines that you give yourself, like you know, I don't know if let's say you update three times a week, well, it, it keeps you going. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, for me it was a, a it motivated me to draw. Versus I think if I had something with a deadline that was much further, I think I would have been like I wouldn't have been drawing the pages. I would have found maybe something else to do. I don't know. I would have been slow. This this kind of like keeps me keeps me going. It's like. A, make sure that I'm doing my, my, my job and because I have to put the update up versus if I say, Oh, well, I can wait two days. I'll, I'll be doing something else or screwing around or, you know, the yeah. or, so. when, it, when it comes to community, um, the, both of you, when you post stuff, whether it's on, on apps or on websites, you have uh, people that, that respond, they put comments, uh, message boards, even um, how, how big of an influence has that been on your own work? Do you, do you change the stories a little bit as people react more to certain things? Do you get more or less excited about something if you if the fans do? Um, it depends. I've I've gotten comments in the past um, where they really helped me, like and beyond just like dumb comments like this comic sucks. It's like that's not helpful. But sometimes people would point stuff out and it would force me to go back and be like, are they right? Am I really like? shortchanging this character or you know being lazy or whatever and that was really that really helped me but but usually yeah i try to ignore a lot of other stuff because i don't want to just like you know preach to the choir like oh they really like these people i'm gonna make them make out you know like, I don't wanna. <laughs> uh for me uh I, I i listen but at the same time uh I've, i kind of surrounded myself with a like this a group of people that i trust and then you know uh, like I co-write a lot of the stuff that I do and I, I also have an editor now and uh, I've had an editor for years now and uh, we we look at the stuff together so I figure you know if there's three or four people agreeing on something I think that we're in the right direction so I don't so even though you know readers may say something it's already kind of too late at that point because we're we've already kind of decided where we kind of want to go even though I'm drawing the stuff almost last minute uh, we're, we still have sort of like this vision of where we want to go with things. So. Mm -hmm. you, you know, one thing I wanted to, to ask you guys about is that, you know, we're talking about, you know, well, let's have these two characters make out because they're fan favorites and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, th this wasn't purposeful, but, it, you know, it's Pride Month. Both of you guys uh, in your comics have had a lot of um, different people with different kinds of relationships. And, and I, I just, was this purposeful? I, I feel like this is something that, maybe would not have been as straightforward if it was uh, if it was in a mainstream comic, if it was like in a Marvel comic or in, in a DC comic or something like that. Um, whereas in the web, like you were saying earlier, you're your own boss. Does that, does that make a difference? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I know I was influenced heavily when I first started doing comics by the other kind of indie comics creators that I was surrounded by when I went to conventions. Um, and most of them were LGBT creators. And so I was exposed to like, oh, they're using, you know, they're, they have a diverse cast that the point isn't like, the point of the story isn't about like their queerness. The point is just like their characters and they're included. So like early on, I realized that that was like an important thing. And so it's always just been, yeah, an easy part of, uh, part of the framework that I think is important to include. And uh, Giselle, uh, what about you? I guess I just did what came naturally to me. Uh, I've always been, uh, I don't know, I mean, it, I mean, it's out there that I'm, uh, I'm intersex. So, I mean, uh, I, I, I was born into this, I think. Uh, so I guess I just did what came naturally to me. So there you go. <laughs> well, well, that brings up another point. Uh, in your comics, uh, you have a lot of, uh, let's be honest, just stunningly beautiful characters, but you also have a variety of body types. There's beauty in different ways. You have uh, intersex character who's also a very prominent character in, in the in the current comic you have. Um, is um, well, 
Giselle, your art seems to be very uh, inspired by Dan DiCarlo. Would that be accurate to say that way? Oh, yeah, I would say Dan DiCarlo. Uh, there was, uh, there's also this, uh, I, I grew up on this uh, sojo anime called uh, Candy Candy. So uh, her name is Yumiko Yagarashi. I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> anyway, uh, her, uh, Rumiko Takahashi as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, so I mean, and she she did a lot of uh, gender bender stuff. And uh, to me that felt, I liked that. Also the 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 guy co uh, who co-writes with me, uh, Dave, he's also a big fan. So it just for us, it was just the stuff that we like. So it just came naturally to do that. And uh, yes, DiCarlo, obviously, I just like his design, uh, same way that I like uh, Takahashi's designs. Uh, she has a sort of like a template. Uh, all the, I try not to be too template-ish, but I do like- When you say template, do you mean character type, like body type? Well, if you look at DiCarlo, uh, the characters are all the same height. They're all five, they're all five heads, uh, all of them. Nobody, nobody except for, uh, I think, Moose. Uh, Moose is well is tall. Everybody's the same height. Uh, that was the one thing that did bug me uh, with uh, his work. So you'll see that I always have the, the guys a little bit taller, but I'll, obviously I'll have, you know, sometimes the women taller. Uh, so I tried to, to play with that, but I do like the template where uh, you can kind of tell that, you know, it's there's a certain way to, to, to the, the eyes are a certain way. But I think anime really helped me uh, be a little bit less template-ish, even though they do have sort of like a template, some would say. But DiCarlo, all the, the women almost looked all the same. You just needed to change the hair color, uh, the hairstyle. Uh, and then, you know, for the skin, they would change the the color a little bit. But other than that, it's the same character. Change the wig on Betty and Veronica is the same girl. Uh, well, so, well, that, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah, but, that, because... that, that, but that speeds the work. It goes faster. And I can understand why he did that, because he was trying to turn out... Uh, you know, X number of pages per day, and he didn't he didn't have time to, to figure around with, uh, you know, body type or whatever. So everything was a certain way. There was like a template. So that is nice because it, it, it speeds up the work, but at the same time, you know, then it, there's no variety. So you have to kind of like, you know, play around with that until you find something that you're comfortable with that doesn't slow you down too much, but that you can still get to do what you want to do in the time that you've allowed it, allotted for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's why I wanted to ask that because DiCarlo had his, you know, beautiful figures, but they were still very much cookie cutter. And, uh, and yeah, you, you broke that. Uh, Monica, you were, uh, you know, laughing a little bit with that too, because uh, I feel like you've had some similar experiences with body types with characters that you've drawn. Yeah, it's crazy how used to one body type or, or used to an ideal body type people are. And they really, they really notice if you even go like, if you vary from that even a little bit all of a sudden people are really attracted to that, which has been great. So um, I, I got that experience a little bit with Bonnie, but mainly with Mags, um, an assassin roommate, because a lot of people who are comics readers just had never seen their body type represented in a positive way, as, especially as a romantic lead. So it was really interesting to kind of explore that. And I've never had so many comments, positive and negative about a person's body type, like especially on any of these like kind of more traditional idealized characters that I've drawn, I've never had any any discussion either way. Oh, they're too skinny or they're not skinny enough. But with Mags, it's like I get I get a bunch of people who are super, super happy at um, the representation of her. And then I get other people who are constantly arguing about whether or not she's gained or lost weight. It's fascinating. You mentioned Bonnie. Uh, mm -hmm. Bonnie. Bonnie and Collide, and, and I just, I'm a big fan of, of roller derby, uh, <laughs> would you call it stage names? I'm not sure what it's called. Um, Near derby arms, yeah. Nom de guerre, uh, I guess. That's, I, 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 by the way, my fr I don't have any French, so just you can correct me on that. Um, was this originally created for the web, or was this also, or was this something that was intended to be a physical print book only? It was web only, and then I, I did a Kickstarter um, a few years back to turn into print and that was kind of a nightmare, like <laughs> formatting it because I'd never intended. I mean, I love, I always, as much as I do web comics for a living, I've, I always want the end result to be a book just because I love having books. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it, 
um, Justel, you've also had your web comics uh, through Kickstarter and stuff made them into physical comics. Um, a lot of your comics are, seem to be done in that that eight and a half by eleven, where they're kind of designed to be in in a, in a website. Sorry, in a, in a physical book, uh, but others not necessarily. Is this something that that you think about when you're designing a comic that you plan it out to be made for the web only, or that you intend it to eventually be physically printed, or is there is that does that go into the design process when you're laying it out? Uh, well, the uh, Menage a Trois and uh, uh, like Sticky Dilly Bun and Sandra on the Rocks, they were all uh, done. Um, the four panels it was uh, two two panels on top of two panels but it, it always splits in half so for a long time for like many years uh i had the second half put next to the first half it looked like a newspaper strip and that was that was like that for like i don't know over 10 years for sure it's just recently that i changed it up and now that you see the two you see the way that i draw it which is two on two, two on two but it was always done as a uh, a strip. It was always intended to be sort of like a newspaper strip that I could then put mm. two on two so that I could print it out as a, you can see there's like a split there in the image. You can take that two and put it on the side and you got a newspaper strip and you bring it down, you got a, a page like a manga sites uh, a book, for instance. So. That's really smart to format it that way. I never, <laughs> I never considered that because I, I it was really influenced by newspaper and it was all very horizontal, but it didn't. It also helps now for Instagram because I can, they're all four panels and then I can just do the swipe. So it has a, like so many multiple uh, ways that you can use it, but you got to stick to the, you know, you got to stick to those panels. Mm -hmm. so. uh, just tell you've, uh, you've put comics on a couple different apps. I've seen your stuff on comics chameleon uh, on Webtoon. Uh, there's also another one called uh, tapas that, that is also very pretty popular, but I think Webtoon is probably the most popular right now of, of Webtoon app. Uh, webtoon apps out there, web comic apps out there, rather. Um, but I, I don't see you posting them on the apps as regularly. Uh, you've mainly stuck with the browser. Is there um, a preference to the browser-based comics for you? Uh, it, it, does it change things when you're trying to put it on onto a, an app? Uh, I normally uh, the comics chameleon. I don't do that. They 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 pick it. They pick them up and they they. I guess they format it for that. I don't do anything with that. Uh, as for uh, Webtoon and uh, Tapas, I think it's called. I tried it out a few months ago. I I think I updated for maybe about a month or whatever, and then I just gave up. There was no, uh, it's just it wasn't going anywhere for me. Uh, I know it's a popular place, but it's, I think it's popular for people that um, I guess that are pushed or that they're helped. I guess through this community, I don't know anybody there. Uh, nobody ever approached me for anything there. So for me to, to send my readers there made absolutely no sense because I'm making no money there mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, I keep making money with my, my own website. So why go there? Uh, so I figured, okay, well, if I'm going to give something for free, I'll just, I'm already giving it for free anyway, but at least on my own site, I'm making a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of money. And uh, with the ads, and um, it didn't seem to change anything to go there for me. But I mean, again, I've been, I've been doing this for so long, and the uh, readers have followed me for over twenty years. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd be open to going there to give it a shot. But I don't, I don't want to just put all my effort into something that brings me absolutely nothing. So, mm -hmm. I, that's it. Whatever. Now, Monica, you you have gotten a push. Uh, I know because I've seen on the Webtoon app, it's actually shown your your comic up a couple times as, as one of their spotlighted ones. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there are, I don't know, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of people posting comics on, on Webtoon. I don't know how popular it is, but it definitely has a, a, a lot of people submitting stuff. Um, how, how has that process been for you? Has it been... Uh, I first heard of you through that, so I'm thinking to myself, is it? Are you? Has it been successful for you? Yeah, it's. Um, I entered Webtoon, I think, differently than a lot of people have, especially since they've grown. So I was first approached, I think, back in 2016 or 2015. Um, I was approached by an editor there when it was like really new to the U.S. It's been going on in Korea for um, for a long time and very successful over there. But when they just brought it over here. They were kind of um, asking creators if they would pitch stuff. 
they were offering that. So I was actually um, kind of approached and then I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'll come up with something. And then they approved it right away. And they were like, when can you start? Which is like, never happens in comics. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll send this pitch out. And maybe like, you know, two years from now, I'll hear something else. So then I, I had to kind of like jump on it. Um, and so since like my generation of webtoon of American webtoon creators, we all kind of had the same story, um, like hashtag blessed and um, let's play. Like we kind of all kind of started at the same time, but since then- I'm just, just, just gonna of, pause for a second. Um, oh. Hashtag blessed is the name of an actual webtoon. She's not just saying that she's blessed. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, not that big a douchebag yet. <laughs> just wanted to point that out real quick. <laughs> You're like, because you said we've all had the same story, hashtag blessed. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so now I know they have, um, I think, well, and I don't even know all the things they have. They have like Canvas and uh, like different ways you can submit your own comic that I haven't explored. So that whole side of it is new to me, which is really fascinating because it, it is such a huge, amazing audience that's like hungry for web comics, which is amazing. Well, one of the things that, and you know, as an outsider, somebody who's not done these things, uh, I would think Webtoon has its own infrastructure. They have, uh, you know, they're going to do Canvas or whatever it is they're going to do for, for different processes. Whereas if you're running your own site, you are literally your own boss. You can decide, you know, how things are laid out, what you're going to include there, what the the um, what the connections are, and what the the community is going to be able to access. Um, so. Giselle, let me ask you for a second. Um, I don't know uh, how much of the website is, is you or how much is just other people that have, that have created it for you, but but is there an appeal to having your that control and, and being able to, to not worry about a corporate infrastructure when you're making your own site? Uh, well, early on, I always built my own sites. I built my own sites for up till uh, this, uh, about a year ago that I had someone else uh, build uh, I had Hiveworks just rebuild uh, everything for me because I was just, I hadn't touched HTML for so long that I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my, my website was so old. The, the Menage a Trois website was dated from 2008 and something that I had built, I can't remember, with tables and, and some program that probably no longer exists. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I like that. I have I have control as, as to what it looks like. Uh, I do think that um, the webtoon thing looks nice. Um, I've read a few, um, but again, uh, it's, it's more question like the, this canvas thing. I think that it used to be called something else when I tried to to put some stuff up there. There's just so many people there that it's really hard to. Uh, to stand out so uh which was the case before too i mean before this webtoon thing before when it was keen space and keen spot and all these things i mean it was a sea of, of web comics uh but back at, back in the day you could at least uh try and advertise uh through project wonderful mm -hmm. to, push your, to, to push your comics somehow but now it's just like mm, there's like no place to push it so you have to go into social media trying to push it through Facebook, Instagram, whatnot. And um, because at, at Webtoons, uh, they're certainly not going to push it for you. I mean, uh, so you have to advertise some, somewhere else. Unless, of course, they approach you. Uh, like, they did approach me in 2016 to do something, but I was working on... In 2016, was a really busy year for me. I was I, I was doing Betty Boop. I was working on the Ramones with Archie. Mm. And it was just like, I said, I don't have time for this. So I... I, I didn't do anything f for them. I didn't do a pitch. So then I think by, by the time that I was kind of ready to maybe do a pitch for them, uh, I think whoever was there before was gone. And, and I don't know who the hell works there now. So, And I haven't really bothered to look. So it's I guess I don't care too much. So. <laughs> well, that's fair. You were talking earlier that uh, you put things in that, that uh, often your comics will be web comics. They will be in that four square format. Webtoon is designed specifically to be read on, on a phone app. And, and because of that, they, there's like, I've, I've seen some of the instructions they have for, for creators saying that it needs to be able to be read in this very, very tall format. Um, Monica, I want to ask you, uh, since you've been working with Webtoon for a while now, uh, has that affected how you lay out and, and plan a comic? Oh, yeah. 
yeah, they, they had told me about it um, initially. And then I, I guess I wasn't paying attention because I submitted my first page, I think like five times before they and they were like, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not right. You have to, like, I didn't understand that you had to split up the panels. So it's not page based, it's panel based. And then uh, the way that you read it is really influenced by both like timing, like how fast you scroll through it and how much space you have between panels. And if you want like extended panels, it's really fascinating. And I haven't played around too much with my comics. They're very like panel, 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 dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. But I've seen other webtoon creators do beautiful, like huge long scrolling, you know, really taking advantage of the infinite canvas um, and adding music and effects. And it's just, it's fascinating to see how you how it changes basically um, what we normally think of as like page layout in comics and, and gutters and everything and it, it kind of gets flipped and you read it almost a different way depending on like how you format it. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a it's a fun experiment. Well, that actually makes me think for a second. Um, a lot of the web comics that that both of you have done, you've published them physically in some form, whether it's a a graphic novel or or, or a, like a regular traditional floppy comic book. But if you were to try to take your webtoon and publish it, I'm not, I, I, have you published Assassin uh, Roommate as a I, physical book? Yeah, like we just- uh, Did, did just you have to reformat it and everything? Yeah, yeah so luckily they, um, it was this uh, company called Rocket Ship and they formatted it, like they hired a designer to format it for me, thank God, because it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare. I was like, oh, I don't, I want a book, but I, I don't. That was, that was going to take like way too much time. So yeah. Luckily when I started, I started on a page and then split it up. But then, yeah, it, again, it still takes so much time, like trying to reformat it. So. Um, now you were talking earlier that, that Webtoon approached you. Giselle, um, you've also worked with, with other publishers uh, traditional comic publishers, uh, you know, you've done Archie books, you've, you've worked with image now. Um, how did those things come about? How did that, that process come about? Uh, did they notice your, your web comics and that gave you an in or was that unrelated? Uh, yeah, uh, the people at Archie were reading, uh, were reading my web comics. So basically, uh, especially the people in production. So they were say, oh, you should, you know, you should, your style really would fit with Archie. So you should, uh, you should pitch something. So one time I pitched uh, something for, they were trying to revamp uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Mm -hmm. And um, I was supposed to be working on some, something for them, but they shelved it for, they shelved it for many years. Uh, same thing with Sabrina. And uh, by the time that they came back to it, uh, I guess they unshelled it. Uh, I guess they had someone else working on it. So in the meantime, they, I, I did a bit of um, little stories in the digest for them and uh, a few single issues. Um, the one that people know the most is the Ramones, the Archimedes Ramones, but also um, Archie 636, where they reverse all the genders. Mm. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, I think that, that, to me, that was a missed opportunity. They, they should have done more with that, but Obviously, it was it was a good idea, so let's not do it. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, another reason to have control over your own characters, I guess, right? Exactly. I mean, that's it's. If you want to be frustrated, work for someone else. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that being said, yeah. you've you've had people work for you as well, right? You've had uh, other other artists take over um, uh, some of some of your web comics or mm -hmm. some of the spinoffs of the comics. And uh, you've had writers that have worked with you. Is it? Is there something appealing to? Or, well, let me put it this way: Are you the boss when it comes to that kind of stuff? Are you kind of uh, being able to to guide the ship a little bit, so to speak? Whereas if you're working with a bigger company, you're just a cog in the machine. Mixing my metaphors yeah. there. Yeah, I'm technically the boss, but I'm I'm probably not a very good boss because I just let people do whatever the hell they want. Uh, Luckily, I have an editor who looks at everything, and I trust him. And uh, T. Campbell, who I've worked with long, I mean, I've worked with him since 2000. So he he probably is the one who suffers the most uh, in regards to dealing with people that are, you know, not happy with the, the tweaks that he he did or whatever. But uh, I think now that we've we found a certain rhythm where everybody's sort of happy. There was a period maybe where there was a little bit of infighting, but uh, I think we're pretty good now, so. 
Monica, have you worked with uh, other publishers, other editors? I, I know that uh, you worked with Oni Press a little bit. Yeah, I've worked you know? with Oni. Um, I've done, I did a short story for Vertigo for one of their strange sports anthologies, <laughs> which is really fun. Uh, I've done some covers for Valiant. Um, oh, and then I did a, a kid, not a kid's book, but a, a kind of middle grade book called GFFs for Paper Cuts. Uh, I did two. Uh, books for them. So yeah, I've worked with a bunch of different publishers and, and it's usually like standalone books. I haven't really done, I'm trying to think I haven't done a series besides working with Webtoon for Assassin Roommate. Well, is there a difference between working with the, I don't, I don't know if you call them editors, producers, I guess, at Webtoon and then working with the editors at a at one of the more traditional publishers? Have, have you had differences in those experiences? Definitely. And, but it also, I mean, it's it's a very like person to person thing. Like you can have editors who are all in the same, you know, all comic book, like traditional comic book editors and every single one of them is different. Like it just depends on their personality, their editorial type, uh, what they're looking for. Like if the publisher wants to be really involved or if they just want you to like do your own thing, it's, it's so, it, it, it's really varied, I found. Like it's not the media or the medium that dictates how the editors behave. It's really like personality types or like what they have time for. Like some editors are, they're automatically put on like 50 different books. So it's just like, well, how how noisy do you wanna be? Or do you wanna like, <laughs> just like do your work and you know, how much feedback do you need or, or how much, you know, do you do you want on your work? It's, it's interesting. I guess it wouldn't be fair to, to just kind of blanket the whole group as like, well, these editors are that way and, and these editors are that way. That makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the things you said earlier, Giselle, was that, you know, you wish they had done more with that, that gender bent uh, Archie comic. Um, and uh, you have, of course, spinoffs of your own universes where you've done uh, taking the characters that 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 you've created in in Eerie Cuties or or in the Menage a Trois comics, and then done other things with them. Uh, how did that process come about? I, I feel like it's almost from an outsider. I feel like this is something that fanfic writers would do, but it's like you're the creator and you're doing it as well. And I just think that kind of that's kind of interesting. How does how does that work for you? That having that freedom to do that. Uh, well, basically, uh, I just follow the what uh, I think they call the some of the Tezuka star system. So I think Clamp does that too. Uh, basically, they just their characters are actors, and they put them in different series. Uh, mm -hmm. And then in the series, they become, you know, they have a new name and the, a new personality. Sometimes there's a little bit of personality that's similar to, to a different universe. But uh, like right now, we have, uh, I'd say, four universes. So we have the Menage à Trois universe, the Eerie Cuties universe, and now we have the Ultra Luminals, uh, which is a superhero universe. So basically, like in Eerie Cuties, uh, some characters are monsters. In Menage à Trois, they're just normal people. Um, and then in the Ultra Luminals, well, they're superheroes. So, But they all have a different name, but it's the same character that you're moving around and putting, uh, like, for instance, um, Tiffany in... Um, in in Eerie Cuties, she started there. That's the first time we saw her. She's a vampire hunter, a slayer. And then in um, in Menage Trois, she's a wrestler. And then in uh, Ultra Luminals, she's a superhero. So, uh, but it's the same girl. Uh, and we do that a lot. Like Gary, who was the main character in Menage Trois, he's a butler in this uh, Ultra Luminals universe. So I was has... wondering what he was doing there. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. we, we just move characters around and then people People who, who follow all of the universes find it fun because they see these characters, their faces again, and oh, it's nice to see them there. But if you just stumble onto this without knowing anything else, you can read it and it's it reads that, like they, they have no idea that this character actually came from another universe or, or whatever. So, and I assume it would be the same thing with if you're reading Clamp or if you're reading uh, Tezuka stuff, you know, you. you so that, that character actually appeared in another series of his and it was another name and it was another, it's like using Brad Pitt and putting him in different series and just say, well, here, you're, you're here and this, you're that. So they're just actors that I can use and I can put them anywhere I want. So. Yeah, it sounds like a American Horror Story, how every season it's like the same cast and they like switch up like who they're playing, which I think is really fascinating. That's fun. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun for us. It's the readers enjoy it. And maybe some people don't, but I mean, I guess we lost them as readers, I guess. 
but uh, you know, we just we do what we have fun with. So that's, that's what it is. Just gives them that choice. They can read one, or they can read the other, or they can read them the, the, the all of them. Um, yeah, some yeah. people just like Miracuti. Some people just like Menage a Trois. Some people have no interest in all of the universes. They can pick the one. Like some people don't like superhero stuff, or they don't like stuff that like has monsters or something that doesn't exist in real life. So Menage a Trois is more realistic. Mm -hmm. so you, you'll, you'll never find something sci-fi in that you know it's it's so if you want that you can stick to that if you like monsters well read the eerie cutie stuff superheroes read the ultra luminals so and it's fun for us because we're not stuck in these you know we can experiment like for me i wanted to try superheroes so i went and i built a world with superheroes i wanted to try monsters i built a world with monsters uh uh, I want to do something a little bit more sexy, sexual, menage a trois, there you go, you know, so. Yeah. I create uh, my own jobs, so. You created your own what? I create my own jobs, the, the jobs oh. that I want to do. I want to do, I feel like do, doing this, I just, I do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I guess. Someone, I, I don't wait for someone to give me the job. I'll, I'll create the job and then I'll make it happen. Yeah, with a big comic book company, they probably have to already have it be approved or whatever. Uh, so like you were saying, they could probably do more with the, the gender-swapped Archie comics. Uh, that would have to be you know, a decision from the company deciding, all right, let's do an ongoing series of, of gender-swapped Archie. Um, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we have a question from one of our viewers asking that if you could pick a single panel from a comic, what would it be? And, and actually, I kind of wanted to tie that to what you guys were talking about with your, with your web comics where... Uh, Giselle, you would do yours in, in sets of four, and, and Monica, you've been doing lately the webtoon where they're tall. Um, do you ever, when you're doing that, consciously say, all right, this is a comic, this is a panel that I'm going to use to promote this? Like, this is going to be the, the hero shot that I'm going to use, when I'm going to spotlight and, and come back to? Or is that just uh, one of those things maybe after the fact, when you're putting it together, like, okay, I guess this is going to be the comic, that the panel that we use to promote it, or that kind of a thing? Um, I, I don't... I actually don't consider that. I just go back and if there's a panel I was particularly proud of, like the way I drew it, that's what I use. Or if it had like a lot going on, like a lot of detail or a lot of action that I think is appealing, then I'll, yeah, then I would use it. That makes sense. Earlier on, uh, there was a panel where Dee Dee's dancing to this, uh, I think Dance dance Revolution or something, <laughs> the Wii, whatever. Uh, and I think, uh, I like the post, so I used it for ads. But other than that, it wasn't because uh, I like that panel in particular. It just it worked. Uh, it was also it, because I was using it on Project Wonderful. I was able to bring uh, readers to the to the comic. But uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite panel. That's for sure. So. Yeah, I love that you mentioned Project Wonderful because I used to spend so much time like formatting those little ads, like different sizes, and like you know. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of too bad that it disappeared, but yeah, it, it, it kind of helped people a lot. But especially before all these webtoons and all these apps to for for comics and stuff. So, and it did. I mean, it it was like such a part of the community, like just yeah. being on there and having your your ad on someone else's comic that you read and everything was really fascinating. It was a way to bring uh, readers over. You think like you would advertise on a site that you thought these readers would probably like my stuff. So you go, you'd go there. So it was kind of helpful and it helped. And also I think it encouraged people to, to do comics. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how encouraged people are today. I mean, I have no idea. I haven't really followed, but uh, I mean, I, I hope, I hope the younger people are not discouraged uh, trying to get into this. Uh, I so. hope not either. I, I get a lot of questions about how you do it, it kind of like how you, and I, I always have gotten questions like that, like even just going to conventions and having mini comics, people are always like, how do you get into comics? And it's like, we, well, you just, you do them. Like you just have to keep doing them. Yeah. You don't, you know, whatever format appeals to you or, you know, works for you, you just have to start doing it somewhere. Well, that brings up a, a good question. Um, if somebody wanted to start a webcomic now, uh, with the, the experiences that both of you have had, uh, what, what would you recommend them do first? Like, should they focus on, on, uh, uh making it for a browser? Should they try to, to go through the, the apps? Uh, is there something else they should consider? Uh, Giselle, what do, what do you think? I'd put it everywhere. I would put it, I'd put it on Instagram. I'd put it, uh, on webtoons, I I build my own site. I would try and push that too, because at first you're not going to be making that much money anyway. So uh, you got to build a reader base, uh, and then from there you try to 
try to sell them stuff, try to put ads on your site and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably the same thing that what we used to do back in the days, just that there's more places where you can put it. It's mm -hmm. just it gets, it gets a little bit frustrating to having to reformat for every place that you're going to put it. Yeah, so yeah. time consuming. It's time yeah. consuming. Yeah, I would say like um, you are going to have to reformat your comic no matter what. So don't worry about format too much. Worry about um, the story and if you can keep it up on a regular basis. I think that's the most important thing is that people will launch a webcomic and then they can't update it every week or something and then people lose interest. Because it is, it's tough to have like a weekly deadline and people expect that now. Now that I think about it, Webtoon does a, they have seasons mm -hmm. uh, and, and each web, Webtoon will be on like on a regular schedule for a season and then they'll leave and then they'll come back for a second season or a third season. Um, whereas if you're doing your own through your website, I guess people are expecting it every week and then you have to kind of say, hey, look, we're gonna take a few weeks off. Um, I, I think Webtoon's kind of built that into the readership that they are already expected to have downtime. Um, I don't know if that that helps or not, uh, Monica. Does that make that easier when you're when you're doing that as opposed to when you're doing stuff on your own? Uh, it does. I, I, I like being held accountable, but um, it is tough because at least my experience with Webtoons has been it's a six month commitment and you can't take a week off. So you either have built enough, you know, padding basically that you can like take your own vacation or something, or yet you try to like cram it into that, you know, however long your break is in between seasons. And even then your break, if it's a month, you're spending that month trying to stockpile for the next season. So it's like, it's interesting. It's, it's very much like a production schedule, uh, which I wasn't used to, but I really like kind of like having those deadlines and having that discipline, I think is really helpful. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. We have a viewer comment here, a question rather. Nikki Hammonds asks, uh, Monica, are you planning to do more webtoons that you've already done or do you uh, want to focus on, on what you're doing right now? Um, and how far ahead do you have to plan your webtoons when, you, when you're working on it there? Do you, do you get like several episodes in already or do you do it like week by week? Uh, for my comic now, I used to be really good about having like <laughs> weeks and weeks ahead of time. And now it's kind of like I only have a few weeks ahead of time. Uh, I have the story planned out, but the actual drawing is still still very much week to week, which is it, it kind of helps me with the story because it's more fresh that way when I do it. Uh, but also, yeah, I do have um, other web comics coming up that I can't really talk about. But yeah, I do have plans for other ones as well. <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. Uh, Giselle, uh, how about you? Are you, um, I noticed uh, as, as somebody's reading your comics for, for a bit now, I noticed that uh, you had other artists doing some of the other books, uh, Eerie Cuties and, and, and some, um, Dangerously Chloe and some of the spinoffs. Um, mm -hmm. But then I've seen you doing some of your own, uh, doing your own comics now again for some of those other titles. Um, is this something you plan to keep doing where you're going to be going back and forth between the multiple uh, universes that you have? Uh, or are you going to be getting more artists and handing it off to them again? Uh, well, I've, I've kind of stopped. Um, I used to have a, a webcomic that would update almost like every day. There would always be something. And for a while, I was, a, I was, a, I was doing seven updates a week. Uh, that, was really, that was really tough. Uh, and But it was not the same webcomic. I was working on three webcomic at once. So one would update three times. The other one was two and then two. Yeah, cause, yeah that's seven. So yeah, I was doing one for three, then two a week, then two. And then eventually I couldn't handle it. So I started giving um, uh, work to other people to help me out or help me with inking or help me with something so that I could manage this. But it was tough for everybody. It was, it was tough on the people that were working with me. It was, it was tough on me. Uh, and then some series I ended up just giving to to other people uh, to do because uh, Dave, I mean Dave, he 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 writes and he, obviously he can write uh, much more than I can because I'm drawing as well. I can only concentrate on writing certain things. So because I have to draw, so um, he was kind of like looking to be able to write more comics. So we ended up creating more so that he could have more stuff to do. Uh, and then I found people to work on that I, that I thought would have a style that's sort of similar to mine so that people would kind of be, would want to go and read it because it, it would feel sort of similar. Uh, so, so we went for that. But now I like the I, artist you had on Sandra on the Rocks. I like, I yeah, like that. 
he's been in web comics for years. He started in the nineties as well. He was on Keen Spot, and even before that, he had his own own site. So I, I've known him for many years. Um, but uh, yeah, I've I've kind of stopped doing the web comics with other people now. It's, I'm just updating my own for now. And the when I hire when I hire people, it's mostly to do like one shots and uh, little mini series that I fund through the Kickstarter. So I don't have to worry about because ad revenue has kind of gone down like really bad. Uh, so I can't really afford to pay these people on a regular basis. So now with the Kickstarter, I'll just grab as much money as I can to f be able to pay them to do whatever they need to do. So mm -hmm. I, I wish I could be a little bit like I used to be, but it's just not, it's not there. So. Are there any upcoming projects that you want to let people know about? Uh, current, I think you have a current Kickstarter right now, uh, Giselle. Yep. Is, there, is there anything that you want to uh, want to talk about to get people to be on the lookout for? Uh, well, it's almost funded, so it's uh, we're basically uh, trying to fund the first volume of the the new web comic, Pixie Tricks Comics, which is basically set in the world of Menage à Trois. But it, there was a comic book shop in Menage à Trois, so basically it's just where the the setting versus the apartment is the comic book shop. Uh, and then the the cast is a mixture of old new, old and new. Uh, I even brought people from uh, Sticky Daily Buns. I brought them in. Um, so we're trying to fund the first volume of that. Uh, then I did a one. I worked on a one shot uh, a Z Z from Menage à Trois. Uh, I, I won't spoil the ending of Menage à Trois, but uh, she ends up on the road with her band. So we we're following her. So it's sort of like a follow up to if you've read Menage à Trois. You don't need to have read Menage à Trois to, to enjoy what we're going to be doing here, but uh, there because she's she's on the road, she's going to end up in Vancouver. So the story takes place in Vancouver versus Montreal, and uh, so a lot of characters that were in Menage à Trois appear in this. And then I also did a, a one shot for Eerie Cuties, which is just short little stories like um, like you'd read in Archie, you know, little you know eight page story. So there's a few little stories in this one shot. So and they stand on they stand on their own. So you don't need to really know this uh, universe to uh, understand what's going on. It's like picking up an Archie comic and reading it. So. How about you, Monica? Anything coming up that you want people to know about? Uh, yeah, Assassin Roommate is still still going strong. I think at least through August. Uh, but I also have another comic with Comicsology Originals called The Black Ghost that I co-write with Alex Segura. Um, and we, the first season is out, it's five issues, but we're working on the second season right now. So that's exciting. Um, but besides that, I have, I have all like a, a variety of projects I can't talk about. So hopefully <laughs> something sticks. I, I like that you call them seasons. I feel like that's the webtoon lingo kind of mm -hmm. leading into other comics. All right. Well, I, I have one last question for both of you. Um, and I figured I'd just ask you one at a time, and then we can uh, thank you guys both for coming. Giselle, if you could give one piece of advice to yourself when you first start out with uh, web comics, what would you tell your past self, I guess? Mm, I don't know. I guess uh, I've changed a lot. Uh, I guess I would say be patient, I guess. Uh, have a lot of patience. Uh, I mean, maybe I, I think I'm more patient. I'm way more patient than I used to be. Uh, I think I, I always had a little bit of patience, but when you're young, you want things to go a little bit faster than, than they're actually going to go. Uh, so I, I guess just don't give up. It'll eventually happen if you really want to, uh, to make it happen. So. And Monica, same question. If you could talk to yourself when you start out on this stuff, what would you have told yourself? Uh, I guess... Partly that it was enough that I was doing web comics, and I I could have focused on that more because I, I I was definitely guilty when I first started of creating not even creating an update schedule, just updating whenever I felt like it. And I briefly got a lot of readers, and then lost them very quickly because I wasn't keeping up with any sort of predictable schedule. So I think just being consistent would have helped me out a lot. But I also was like scattered and like, do I need to print this? Do I need to? attract a publisher? Do I need to do a zine instead? I was all over the place and I didn't know where to focus. So yeah, I would say more, more consistency, more focus <laughs> for my younger self. <laughs> well, thank you both very much. I'm glad you both had a chance to come by and uh, it's been really exciting talking to you. 
uh, again, I, I'm trying to be consistent myself doing these weekly and, and trying to have a different topic each week, but I can only, you know, hope to be like you guys. If you have putting these regular issues out that has that such great big followings and, and I'm going to continue reading them. Well, thank you guys very much. And I ask everybody else to come back again next week. We'll talk to somebody else then. Until then, keep making myths. <laughs>